They got him. Oh, you didn't know this? Well, hang I on. Think Save, it all day, Save it then. Save it then. Going live. I had a dream. All right. Talk to you later. Yep. It looks like it's starting. I think we're good. Pull up some music. Let's spread this link. Where the heck is my link? Where's I got gotcha. you. Spreading it everywhere. I'm going to do the everyone tag. Oh, you got it already? Yeah, I was already typing. Okay, you got it. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Let me just uh, post this on my Patreon for my supporters. Use YouTube Live. Post that. Nope, not patrons only. Not scheduled. Publish now. Boom. Hello, hello, everybody. How are you? Tonight's going to be a very informal stream. <laughs> check, check, check. Yeah, let me uh, turn you up a little bit. You have to turn yourself up, too. I have to turn myself up, too? Yes. I also... You know, you know what it is? I have the... Uh, the music is very loud. I'm pretty sure you're still going to be quiet if you turn the music down. Okay, I can turn myself up by... That much is how much I'll, is how far I'll go. Check one, two. All right. Now, how is our sink? I didn't check the sink. In fact, I can do it this way. Check one, two. Check one, two. This is the power of the sound of my voice. Can you clap for me? I got, uh, I got it here. I think your sync's fine on my end. Uh, do you want to move to recording, Leonard? Or? Oh, bye, sorry. It's okay, Chance can stay here. All right. This is an informal stream. Just Chance, try not to um, dominate the stream. If you haven't been on one of these things before, uh, let me lead the thing and, uh, you know, make your comments when you have something, you know. When you have something uh, that adds to the stream is, is what I guess what the the standard is. So make, basically make comments from the check one two, check one two. Yeah, also you're really this quiet. Is the power of oh, the sound of my voice. oh I yeah, I'm a little bit ahead. I'm a little bit ahead. <laughs> We're probably going back to the I don't know, about one second delay. Alright, I'll do the same thing on the desktop audio as well. Yep, a half second behind is about right. We should be much closer now. Still a frame or two off sometimes, but we're getting we're getting through it. I have I have something that will really help this wherever the heck it went. We have a new piece of studio equipment that I'm very happy to uh, to to, uh, to talk about. But that that's not what we're here to talk about tonight. We are here. Let me see if I can pull it up on Firefox. I'm still a little bit manic from having found out about this. And just for context for everybody, I was laying on my couch four minutes ago, and he tagged me saying, "We're going live." I'm like, "Oh, oh yeah!" Like I literally, I literally just found out about this five minutes ago. I have, uh, I mean, somebody could find the tag in our news channel, but I, I literally just found out about this like five, ten minutes ago. Yeah. So the story is that they have found the man who was impersonating police, the man who tried to pull me over, the, try, the man who threatened me with a steering wheel lock. They, they have charged him. He is a 35-year-old man by the name of Juan C. Burgos Santiago. He is a local. Um, there were a couple. There were a couple theories, and one of the theories was that the li the license plates came from New Jersey, but the car and the driver were from Pennsylvania, and this was some kind of clever way to evade 
identification in in Pennsylvania where we do all that that license plate scanning. If you're not aware of this, police officers in many places have high speed cameras that can take pictures of license plates. I think they're basically a black and white camera, right? And and they take pictures of license plates. That you'll see them on on the cars, on the on the police cars or parking authority cars or whatever. They'll be they'll be about like a forty five degree angle, and they'll be angled somewhat down at the uh, you know where a license plate would be. <clears throat> That's what those things are. Those are high speed license plate cameras. So if you stole license plates from a neighboring state, maybe the maybe your home state. You know, the foreign plates wouldn't be recognized by the license plate cameras, so then you wouldn't be able to be tracked now, would you? So that seems kind of clever. Oh, I, I so okay. So about slow mode, I went live using uh, using thing, uh, YouTube's live options here. Uh, let me see if I have. I don't think I have slow mode enabled. I don't even know how to. Nope, I don't even know how I would have enabled that, but whatever. Somebody let me know if there's a way that I can uh, fix that. But uh, thank you very much, Dreamer Don. Oh, hey, cool, I can add a card. Let's add a card in. <laughs> this is cool. So this is the original 10-minute video. that I think would have just popped up on the stream. I don't know how this works. But uh, so I just added a card to the thing. And hopefully you can you can see that. Uh, if not, I can post a link to the video. Do we want to, we don't want to go over, I don't really want to go over the video again. You guys can watch it if you want. But the gentleman was a local. He's from Hanover Township. He was charged, I guess last Friday? Yeah. He was charged last Friday with terroristic threats, impersonating a public servant, harassment, disorderly conduct, and reckless driving. He was arraigned before Judge Patricia Engler, she's my local judge actually, and released after posting $25,000 bail. And then they go on to describe the incident. I had to read it. I had to read it uh, a couple times to make sure, like, okay, wait a minute, 6 p.m., August 11th, okay, that was about it. That was about, that was the day, right? Uh, so I, um, I had to read it to make sure it was, it was mine. So that's really cool. They found the guy and, and holy shit. what I said, holy shit. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Now, Patricia Engler, that's why would he be charged? I guess that just happens to be the way the district map works because she's my local judge. And, and although I'm just thinking of where the districts are. That's a that's that's a, that's pretty far away from her district, but whatever. Um, they did not tell me about this. I found out about this from from somebody in our in our channel. So I'm kind of curious as to why. My first impression is that they have video evidence. They have my statement, and I'm available to testify and willing. And I'm a local attorney who takes these things seriously. So I'm fairly certain the guy will want to plea, some, plea to something. And they might not ever need my input beyond, you know, do I have any problem with a certain plea deal or something? I'll have yeah. to think about that. I don't, I don't like what happened very much at all. It's uh, one thing, you know, simple crimes are one thing. This was a well thought out complex crime of trying to fool people into letting someone take advantage of them. I have a question. Do they have to talk to you if you're the one pressing charges? Um, they don't have to talk to me. What, what do you mean? Like to, about a plea deal or something? About everything. I mean, surely they should have told you since you're pressing charges against him, right? Well, yeah, I already, like, but I already told them that I was gung ho about pursuing that, and you know, I wasn't going to be a problem. So I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to go home at the end of the day and they forgot to make a phone call to me, or 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 I don't know. Really don't. Could have been that maybe they did and they just didn't leave a message or something. I, although, phone's pretty good about telling me who's calling. I think I would have seen a local number that you know shows up as state police. Yeah, I uh, know they did not find him the same same day. If we understand this correctly, right? Yeah. So the incident. I mean, I don't remember the exact date. 
Um, August 11th. And there's more to this stream. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go over a few things that I want to tell you what I've been doing. Um, but yeah, so August 11th, I guess it was. I think sometime around August 10th is when I went. Was that around the time that we ordered my my phone and 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 everything? Uh, nope. That was a week later that we ordered your phone. Okay. I believe. August 11th was a Saturday. Yeah, um, uh, August. That was the day it happened. Yeah, August uh, 10th or either 9th or 10th was, I think, when when we ordered the phone. I remember that because I got the email from August 10th. I just didn't remember if it was exactly <gasps> then or not. Oh, that's right. That's right. We ordered the phone and then we um we forgot to go to the store. So August 11th we went to the store. That's right. Right. We had to get we had to get together again, um, yeah. to go to the grocery store. Okay, that's 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 immaterial, but we're trying to trying to think of like when this happened in in real you know in, in our calendar time. So this was about uh, two plus weeks ago. Yeah, coming up on two and a half weeks ago. Um, since then, I'd love to say that yours truly is the most hardened soldier in the world, and this doesn't affect me. No, no, I've been a bit, I've been a bit concerned. Uh, in in Fred Savage's uh, Princess Bride use of the word, I was only concerned. Yeah, concerned me has been carrying my sidearm and an extra clip and pepper spray. Yours truly ordered a new knife today so that I could carry a knife in case this guy was still at large. <clears throat> now, he I, is I have... still at large. I Go ahead. Have a question. Yeah. Um... Is there like a permit or something you require to carry a certain length knife or something, or...? So, yes and no. These laws vary state by state in the U.S., so you have to look up what your state's laws are on things. There is no prohibition on knives in Pennsylvania that I was able to find. I'm, I am an attorney, but I am not... This is not... This is not legal advice. I'm not saying, hey, if you live in Pennsylvania, you can do. Um, this is what I do based on my interpretation of the law. I would recommend that if you want to talk to an attorney who knows something about firearms law or weapons law, probably Josh Prince is the guy in Pennsylvania for that. So um, also, I have not talked to Josh Prince because I probably couldn't afford him. But in Pennsylvania, uh, basically the only restriction is it can't be a switchblade or other automatic opening knife. Even an assisted or gravity opening, a gravity assist knife, those are fine. Just to, you know, press a button, the knife flicks open all by itself, that's not allowed. Um, you got to have one of those that's got a bias towards closure or something, I think they said. Firearms are uh, open carry is allowed, but any carry in a car is considered concealed, and so you need a permit for either carrying concealed or carrying openly in a car or something like that. So I have these permits. I have I have in Pen uh, in Pennsylvania permits are issued automatically so long as you have no criminal record or other uh, criminal history, and you answer your questions, and the background check comes back, and everything. They don't. We, we are what we, what's called a shall issue state. This is a point of contention uh, in the whole gun control, not control thing debate because some states have taken the well-regulated militia and interpreted that to mean that they can control your training at the very least. You can't get a permit unless you have training. Here in Pennsylvania, I didn't need to get any training before I got my permit. In fact, I was taking my permit seriously, and you know, not I, I didn't really think it was a good idea to be having such force available to me without being trained, so I pursued training. And I highly recommend training. There is absolutely no way you can go from not shooting a gun to carrying one concealed and be able to use it to defend yourself. No way in heck you need to train with it. And I don't just mean go to the range. You need to train regularly in in pressured situations. Uh, go to your local shoot or whatever, your local range. And when they do a shoot and they do tactical drills and things like that, that's not just for fun. It is fun. You can have fun doing it. But it's it's also for training you to not freak out when you have to do those things. You know how long they take. You know the problems. You know what happens when something gets stuck. Uh, you know when you, you know, when you make a mistake, how to correct for it, and those are all things you need to know how to do. And if you watch the fifty-three minute video of me talking about here, I'll do another card. 
talking about the fake cop thing, I made several mistakes where he could have either taken further advantage of me or I could have hurt myself or put myself in a dangerous position. Um, and, and there was also an opportunity to catch him on that day that I missed as well. So these just in the heat of the moment, you, you're not paying attention to everything. You can't. You're a, you're a limited human being. So it happens. Um, so yeah, since that day, I have carried I have carried my firearm uh, with an extra clip. I've been extremely vigilant about keeping my uh, house alarm on. Um, I look I look up and down the street when I open my door. I look out my back my back window before I let the dogs outside because I honestly didn't know what what I had to worry about. It's a double-edged sword. I released the video for for everything, for all the purposes to to help find the guy, to help vindicate and and, and express myself because these things are very stressful for me and the uh, and and to have the copyright experience, which we've talked about too. Uh, World Star Hip Hop had to issue I had to issue a DMCA to them um, and a few other DMCAs, and eventually I licensed the video out to Viral Hog and just let them take care of it because I didn't have the the capacity any further. So it's been a stressful couple of weeks, and I'm honestly feeling very relieved that they that they got this guy, and I'm hoping that that's the end of this gentleman's criminal career. On, I mean, I mean, really, that's that's a good thing for everybody. It'll be good for him too if he decides that maybe this is not the way he wants to to conduct himself. And I'm assuming this comes with jail time. So when he's let out of jail, uh, then maybe he'll be a reformed person. I don't know how many years. I haven't even begun to look this stuff up. But let's see. What was it again? It was uh, terroristic threats, impers impersonating a public servant. I'm in the wrong thing. Uh, terroristic threats, impersonating a public service, a public servant, harassment, disorderly conduct, and reckless driving. You know, I'm sort of surprised that, like, assault and battery isn't in there because I feel like he put me in reasonable fear of immediate bodily injury or death. Maybe not. Maybe I wasn't entirely at fear of immediate death, but I was actually, I was in fear of being beaten to death, that's for sure. And he's very lucky that he didn't pursue that because I would have had to fire and I did not have to fire. I don't even think I pointed the gun. I don't even think I got the gun out of the holster to point at him in time. But he definitely saw me going for it. And I'm glad for I his sake and my sake. Because I don't want to. I really, I really don't want to ever have to use that thing that way. I would really prefer if I wasted my entire life uh, with this training. Wasted all of it. If, if every dollar was spent and it was a complete waste of time. I would make me very, very happy. If I never had to use my gun in self-defense. But more than once this has been the outcome that some something weird has happened and simply having a firearm meant that i got out of it safely terroristic threats probably covers the assault that's a good that's a good thought that's a good thought yep people all over the place are are, are sending are telling me that uh, that they got him yeah so this is really cool. I'm, I don't know if you can tell why I'm super, I'm a little bit manic. I'm a little, I'm very relieved. I'm a little surprised. I'm still, I'm still processing and trying to figure out like, what does this mean? So this means that he's going to have a court date. Um, we can probably look up if that has been scheduled. So let's do that together because that's how, you know, that's how we learn, right? So in Pennsylvania, we have something called the Uni Unified Judicial System. Um, it's not like not this is not for everybody. This is just for Pennsylvania. Uh, for us, it's called the UJS Portal. It's a public site. You can look up attorneys. You can pay your 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 fines and things. And I used to use this system to find uh, uh, out, find out client information for traffic tickets, and I would send out mailings. My ex-girlfriend lawyer would, would send out mailings as well, and we would do traffic cases. This is one of the ways we paid the bills 
before the copyright cases took over and before the the the, the channel got big and before we broke up. Well, I broke up because, well, heh, I don't kiss and tell, at least not on stream. So we go to a magisterial district court here. And there's a whole bunch of text on this page. I'll zoom in a little bit so it looks a little bit more usable. And we're going to search by participant name. And the way I usually do this is, is just post the, the, the name. And then you only need the first letters. So I'm going to use that. And we're going to say we're in Lehigh County. Now, this is traffic. So I'm not sure exactly how much is going to come up here. Hey, Nathan, thank you for the five bucks. Also, TMRE, thank you for the two bucks. Really appreciate it. Okay, so here we have Juan Santiago. There's a couple different ones. Now, they said this guy was 35 years old, so that would make him a 1983 birth date. So I'm going to add this in here. Juan, what was it? Juan C. Let's see if that works at all. Yeah, and this is just for traffic, by the way. This would have been charged as a criminal case. So I'm right now I'm just looking up his traffic docket, see if there's anything... 1972 is not him. So, okay. Uh, I know this is... All right, what am I doing wrong here? Let's try this a different way. Could it be 1983? All right, 82 even? We'll look for the docket type criminal. It could also be that the active cases are not floating to the top for some reason. There are three or four or more pages. Uh, Burgess could be, you're right, Burgess uh, Santiago could be, there's a 1207, yeah, but that's Felix. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I was just looking at the date, sorry. This, oh, you know what, this could be a typo, this could be 1980, this could be 1982. Yes, this is about the fake cop Manitoba and they caught him. Nope, this is driving an unregistered vehicle. That could be something. Oh, that that's No, this is uh, something this is different. This is this is different. This is somebody else. Hmm. How are we gonna find this? Judge Engler is a magisterial district justice. Um hmm. Hmm. Yeah, let's try let's try let's try Burgos as the last name. Maybe that's just what it is. I'm I'm going to get a lawyer dog, definitely. Let's go back to Lehigh County here. Boom. You guys were right. You guys were right. Oh, this is this is why I can never use this on mobile. If you click here, it pops you to the top, and then you can never click on docket sheet or court summary. Oh, wow. There he is. Okay, he's been... As I, that's what I thought. He's been assigned to Michael Damore... He was arraigned before Judge Engler. Oh, Judge Damore knows me. I've been before Judge Damore so many times. This guy is insane if he thinks he's going to to fight this thing in front of Judge Damore. Judge Damore is is a big round teddy bear. And he's not that doesn't mean he acts like a, you know, pushover judge or anything, but he's a, he's a nice guy and I really like him. And okay. I don't think this is going to go well for anyone. So let's see here. 
He was charged by Bethlehem State Police. Who was his charging officer? Oh, we have a we have a um, we have an address for him. Probably shouldn't be putting that up on the stream. No. But it is also a completely public docket. This is not. This is not. There's absolutely nothing secret about this docket. If any of you want to see this, you can. You can go look it up here. This is what. This is. Any you know, journalists would go and use this. Uh, we yeah. are not doxing him. Um, that was. This, this is public information for when people get charged with crimes. Uh, two notes. First of all, he has the same birthday as me. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> April thirtieth. Also. Do not harass him, please, everybody. This is a public message. Do not harass this man in any way. Do not contact him, anything like that, please. No, the judge and I don't know each other. The judge and I know who each other are. I have appeared before the judge before as an officer of the court. So, no, that's not a conflict of interest in any way, let alone that it would have to be a concurrent conflict of interest or something. No, that's not what, that's not, that's not what we're talking about. Um, I just mean that when you – when when you put a perpetrator next to a victim and the victim is a credible lawyer who the court has who has the court has seen in court before there's a level of credibility that will not be at issue I, the judge will not have to establish my credibility in the case So it looks like September 14th, 11 a.m. is is the court date. If I want to go and and see what's going on, I'm going to go uh, put this in my calendar. So if this guy had a lawyer that was worth his uh, worth a dime, um, would he like bring up things like the right to face his accuser and things like that? Like, would, oh, I'll be would there. Any... I'll definitely be there. <laughs> Okay. No doubt in my freaking mind will I. Nope, I'll be there. That'd be great if, like, the lawyer was like the right to face. Oh. We 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 talk, we're talk, We want to use that, and you were like, "Hi, Hi. over here." <laughs> yeah, if I was the state police, I definitely wouldn't be telling him that the victim is an attorney. Also, I'd like to. I I, I might prefer that they don't tell him that the victim is an attorney, lest I be uh, you know, the target of something. Hmm. Uh, yeah, no live stream from the courtroom, but definitely before or after or what. Uh, so where are we? Okay, so uh, tr trying not to dox this person any further, actually. Let me put these documents into a folder here, and I'll quick redact the, the address out. I'm happy that I know his address, but uh, I understand that I shouldn't be, I shouldn't post that on YouTube. So do you think you have a civil case against him of, of any kind? Probably. The question is, is it worth it? Is there anything I'm actually going to get anything out of it? Well, the bail that they re required him to post was 25 grand. Usually they base bail on the severity of the crime and the means of the person True. who committed the crime. So that might be telling about whether it's worth to even pursue him. So this is his court summary um this summary should show other it's not a background check but it should show other court actions so it appears that he has no criminal record this might be his first criminal charge this is terroristic threats with intent to terrorize another it's a misdemeanor one um i, I mean we can look up these statutes he's been charged with harassment course of conduct with no legitimate purpose impersonating a public servant misdemeanor two um disorderly conduct uh, of have a hazardous physical nature and reckless driving uh the harassment the disorderly conduct and the reckless driving are all summary offenses meaning you know mostly a, a citation and you pay a fine uh, they, they can come with they can come with jail time if it's if it's a severe enough offense so we can look up some of these things let me uh, let me try here If it doesn't want to highlight, let's do eight. Yeah, here we go. 18 PA code. Forbidden access denied. 
Okay, I guess I can't access the the law. I'm not I'm not allowed to access the law, everyone. There we go. <laughs> wow, twenty seven oh six A one. Terroristic threats. A person commits the crime of terroristic threats if the person communicates either directly or indirectly a threat to commit any crime of violence with intent to terrorize another or evacuation of a building or public inconvenience. Any person convicted of this section shall, in addition to any other sentence, be sentenced to pay restitution in an amount equal to the cost of the evacuation. <laughs> Uh, any emergency medical services, any transportations of a bill of people or whatever. An offense under subsection A constitutes a misdemeanor of the first degree unless the threat causes the occupants of a building, etc. So that's a misdemeanor of the first degree. And we'll do Pennsylvania crime grading. Grading of crimes. Well, thank you. That's not very helpful. Does someone have like a colorful graph, maybe? Are you looking for sentencing guidelines? Yeah, in Pennsylvania. Um, let's try this one. Oh, hey, this might actually be it. I found a colorful graph if you haven't. Uh, so this is from Penn-Law, Jason Antoine. Thank you very much for having this. It looks like a misdemeanor of the first degree is five years, $10,000 fine, maximum sentence. And misdemeanor second degree is two years, $500,000 fine. Excuse me, 500000 wow. $5,000 fine, uh, maximum sentence. The summary offenses, well, they're saying here 90 days each and $300 each. So that's that's definitely nice to know that he's facing approximately seven years. Well... The judges don't usually do these things consecutively unless somehow that warrants it. So you you would serve a maximum of five years with the others the other sentences being concurrent. So you have eliminated your two year sentence when you've served two years of your five year sentence. Uh. Uh, this itself is not a misdemeanor. The the court summary is indicating that he has three of these things. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 misdemeanor one for the terroristic threats, misdemeanor two for the and some, the rest are summary offenses. You are you are correct. Uh, I was thinking felony. I was uh, my my brain really is kind of going haywire right now with all of this, trying to just just processing because this was totally unexpected. Interesting. So, um, would would this be considered a simple assault attempt or an indecent assault, or what are we talking about? Like, I, I found another colorful graph. I don't know if it's helpful, but it looks like you might be entitled to restorative sanctions, though. Yeah, I. So the thing is, with even with crimes like this and such, you're really you're really not going to get a windfall of money from the perpetrator. Let alone, you know, I, I don't know how much money the perpetrator has. Of course, they did post at least $2,500 of that $25,000 bail, but that could have been on personal bond from like a uh, bail bondsman or something like that. Who knows? If the person, even if the person has money to go after, even if they're a worthy candidate for being sued, there, what, what, what damages did I really suffer? I handled this differently than I've handled things in the past where I've been more deeply affected. Most of the time when I'm deeply affected by these things, it's because of the response to them, not the actual crime. The, we're not going to do anything even though you were clearly assaulted. I'll give you an example that I'm still kind of dealing with, um, and not the one from this year. A couple of years ago, when I was still dating the lawyer constable girlfriend, um, there were some people who pulled up outside my house with their music blaring. And I'm no prude. I'm not, I'm, I'm really not a big jerk, but this was the loudest pulled up in front of your house with music blaring that has ever happened in my entire life. 
I've had my I've had my windows shake. I've had it wake me up at night. I've I've called like the non-emergency number and said, "Could you please send somebody to tell them to turn the music down in the middle of the night or something?" This was shaking my entire house. The windows at the back of the house were shaking from this base. I don't know if they just got the car from the thing and they were pulling up in front of my house to test it out or if this was like just a regular thing. But I came storming out of the house. I was like, why did I turn your music down? And, you know, yeah, that was probably a really stupid thing to do. Because they jumped me. They chased me back to my house. They broke my window. Um, they were trying to get in the house when I retrieved my gun. And when they saw me with the gun, they ran. And I got the license plate number. And I gave the license plate number to the police. And long story short, they didn't do anything. And I gave it to my constable girlfriend, who said she could do something. And she did nothing. And not even explain why she couldn't do anything. And a, the other constable said he could do something. And a car dealer said he could do something. And the police sergeant said he could do something. And the crime victims council of the Lehigh Valley said they could do something. None of them did anything. And when I eventually followed up, pretty tearfully, I might add, I was extremely distraught that my own police department refused to prosecute the people who assaulted me, regardless of whether I was wrong to come storming out of the house yelling, turn down their music which I really don't, in retrospect, think that that was really all that far off. But I later found out that it had been categorized as mere vandalism, and they refused to pursue it because they wouldn't tell me. Um, in fact, every time I asked them, they kept telling me that the detectives are on it and will call me when they need me. But I'm going to bet that nobody actually ever looked up that license plate number. So... Please understand, I don't expect the police to be on my side anymore. I've so far reported several crimes to the police where then I got charged or otherwise treated like I did something to deserve this crime. So I was, and you can, I mean, you can ask my staff too, I was actually concerned that I might go to the police and find myself being charged with something. So there's an incentive not to go. I, you know, better the devil you know than the devil you don't know. However, if I did that, this wouldn't have happened. It did. We got him. I'm not sure that you, you didn't do anything even remotely wrong in the situation, besides maybe following him. Yeah, but. a little a little bit of traffic this here or there. Somebody really wanted to charge me with crossing the crossing the solid white line or whatever, or cutting somebody off or an improper lane. Yeah, they could do that. And that's what Trooper Rob Hooper did in uh, the Belfast State Trooper barracks when I reported an aggressive driver who, at a stoplight, he had st he had followed me off of the highway. He thought I cut him off. I, I, I might have cut him off, like, a little bit, but not nothing super weird, like... I was in the left lane, there was a line of cars, the, the, he was merging in from the right from a different highway, and when I got clear of him, I moved over to let the line of cars keep passing, and he was super pissed off that I didn't, like, stay in the left lane and let him pass me on the right. I didn't cut him off more than by about three car lengths, so, I mean, that's, that's certainly cutting off in even my book, but that's not illegal cutting somebody off in, like, some dangerous way. And I certainly didn't cut him off and, like, slam on my brakes or anything. He followed me off and off, off the off-ramp. Uh, when we stopped at a light, he tried to get into my car. He tried to open my door and only backed off when I pointed, off, pointed out that I had cameras. The police were, were upset with me when I got there. They were not upset with me when I called. They were upset when I got there. And the, the, state, police, the state trooper was Trooper Rob Hooper, and who was a, a decorated war veteran from Afghanistan or Iraq. He's about my age or possibly a little younger, and he's a, a well-regarded, honorable military veteran. And so I really didn't anticipate that I would get shit from him for reporting an aggressive driver who tried to attack me in my car. No matter how much you like my cutting him off or not or whatever, there's no reason to take that aggression and throw it back on the victim as... Uh, oh, well, you, you, you shouldn't have cut him off, so here we're going to charge you. 
and it, where I'm going to get a little strong language here, everyone, and by strong, I, I don't mean I'm going to curse. I'm going to call Mr. Trooper Rob Hooper a coward for not showing up to court when it came time to face the fact that he had charged the victim with a minor traffic offense in retaliation. He did not show up to court, and I am calling him a coward for that. But other than that, he's a decorated, honored, honorable war veteran, and I'm absolutely 100% uh, re- respectful of his service and, and the chances and the risks that he took for that. And I'm sorry that it's affected him in this way, that he is having trouble being a, you know, a, pl- a, pl- a state trooper with some good bedside manner, at least in my case. But that's what that's why I don't exactly run to the police for help. That's why I might carry a firearm instead of hoping the police get there in time, because they haven't always been on my side, even though I'm pretty sure I'm doing things the right way. I don't expect them to crusade on my behalf, but I definitely expect them to not assume I'm the criminal uh, when I'm just, you know, reporting something or whatever. Uh, We do have a couple of questions. Um, One is... Why would impersonating a police officer only be a misdemeanor second degree rather than a, <laughs> no than a third idea. degree felony? Also, why would terrorist uh, terroristic actions with with intent to terrorize only be a misdemeanor three and not a felony th- three? I have no idea. Like both of those sound like felonies to me. Mm-hmm. Like as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and well, I feel like the impersonating a cop was the worst of the two. Like. Yes, yes. I I don't I don't don't honestly know. And there there might be a conversation about this. Looks like he's posted bail. Uh unsecured bail. So that means he actually doesn't I don't think he had to pay anything. Oh, unsecured means that if he does do something then they will make him pay 25 grand, right? Yes, he owes twenty five grand. That'll they'll slap that on his his tax bill or whatever from this. Okay. So yeah, my case was dismissed. the the when you the one you were saying the one I was talking about where the trooper didn't show and I'm I'm going to stop talking about that now because that's you know lawyers need lawyers. That was a case where I needed my own lawyer because not because I couldn't defend myself in court, but I was so pissed off that I was I, my judgment was clouded. My judgment, I would have said things in court that I shouldn't say. And instead, it, it still didn't, it didn't happen the way I wanted it to in court either. The first court appearance was this magistrate, magisterial district justice kind of thing. And that judge was a former cop. And even though my, even though I was charged with failure to use my signal when turning, the second section of that, was an improper lane change, but they charged me with failure to to signal when changing lanes. So once I proved by by having the camera with the audio and you could hear that I had put my my indicator on, the judge found me guilty of the second section, which was not what I was charged with. That's not legal either. And the only reason I didn't pursue a complaint against the trooper and the judge, frankly, for, you know, again, finding somebody guilty of a charge they weren't charged with is not allowed, um, is because I do traffic cases, or I did at the time, and what am, what am I going to do? Uh, the, the shit where I eat, basically? No, I, I, I need to be able to say that I was gracious to the police, I was gracious to the judges, I was gracious to the constables. I, I, I can't have my name floating around as the guy that did this. So I have to bide my time. I have to write it down and, and remember it and buy the domain name trooperrobhooper.com and bide my time till when it's appropriate to tell that story and I'm not going to get in extra trouble for it. And I shouldn't have to do that. I should be able to tell stories critical of the government without fear of retaliation from my local police department. But as you've heard, my local police department already seems to not like me for some reason. So 
yeah where do you go with that like I, I already have trouble with them so what am i supposed to do like just take further chances of reporting crimes to them in the hopes that they'll just like me one day good freaking luck it's just trooper rob hooper dot com and I'm no, getting a lot of i don't um i already own it and i don't uh, i don't have anything up there yet Yet. I'm holding it. I'm holding on to it because this was it's just disgusting that 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 this is what goes on and that I can't and, and, and it's you know, I can't blame anyone, any one person for me feeling like I can't talk about it to the police. But, you know, w what recourse do I have? I, I really don't. I, I have to consider making a complaint against a decorated military veteran who's now serving his state as a as a. Uh, it's just a horrible decision to have to make. Thank you very much, Trooper Hooper. I really appreciate this decision. Jerk. I'm getting a lot of crap because um, I logged it. I switched over to check the super chats so I could have it for later, and then I accidentally typed as you. Now everybody's calling me Brandon. <laughs> Brandon, you're their favorite copyright impersonator. <laughs> nice. Good job. Okay, so for everyone who's just turned tuning in, they got him. The man who tried to pull me over in a fake unmarked police car with fake lights and then got out of his car and tried to threaten me with a steering wheel lock, which is sort of like a crowbar. They got him. Uh, thank you, Andrew Cruz. <laughs> you would have pursued that to the end of the earth. Yeah, I, I feel like it too. Uh, so this article says, it's very short. It says that the 35-year-old man has been charged with impersonating a police officer. His name is Juan C. Burgos Santiago of Hanover Township. He was charged last Friday with terroristic threats, impersonating a public servant, harassment, disorderly conduct, uh, reckless driving, and I thought there was one other one. Uh... Harassment, terroristic threats, impersonating a public servant. Yeah. And and he was released on $25,000 unsecured bail. So, yes, they got the bastard. Uh, I wanted to see here, without doxing the guy, who the charging officer was. Sometimes they list the arresting officer Keller. Yep, that was the officer. If you remember the video, there was a moment where, at the end of it, he drive the, the the perpetrator drives past the trooper and the trooper goes after him after I flag him down but the guy drove off too fast and the trooper went the wrong way same trooper that's the guy trooper keller so what a laugh. I don't know if you can hear it I am super stoked I am I am really really stoked and and uh I don't I'm going to sleep well I don't know if I'm going to sleep soundly tonight cuz the guy's out on bail <laughs> Can I pop in? Yeah. Um, slightly off topic. I'm actually going to go now because my internet's about to get upgraded. Okay, have fun. So... Have a good night. Yep. You too. And, I, and pe for everybody who's wondering why the reporter didn't include a video, I don't think they know that there was a video. I think that this was a a docket that was sent to them and then they made an article about it. Yeah. Um. So I don't think they know there was a video. Yeah, I'm going to write to them. I'm going to write to the, the reporter. I actually already wrote an email. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know the guy. Uh, $50, yeah, I, I told $50,000 and I'll give you his name. <laughs> no, 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 I told him there was a video and that he that he was he had permission to embed it on the article if he wants to. <laughs> I told him, do not. Well, I didn't tell him that, but I just said you can embed it. So hopefully they do that because... Be nice to have that on the article, you know, tie everything up. Thank you, Bodhi, for the well wishes. I uh, am one last oh. Go ahead. Okay, uh one last thing before I go. Love your hat, where can I get one? Oh, this is a I think it's buff B U F F. Uh it's on here someplace. I don't want to take it off and reveal my terrible hair. Um I I was working at a it's it's very hot outside, and I'm working at a very hot job site um a hotel that's going under renovation not today but um when i've been working there I, the sweat just 
I, I don't, I'm not trying to be disgusting or anything, but like it, it gets into your eyes and it's just, it just makes it very difficult to work. I wear glasses, it drips onto my glasses. So I, tr- out of desperation, tried a sweat band. And this was my, what I found as a sweat band. This is a, it's made for hot weather. It's made as a wicking kind of sweat band kind of thing. And it's made to be like a convertible, you know, make whatever garment you need out of it. It's, it's a long tube thing. Okay. Uh, Nico is accusing you of wearing a book cover. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on up, my boy. All right, I'm going to go Turn and Turn around. That. Come back. Hop. Hop. Good boy. Blackleaf asks um, whether unsecured actually means that he has not posted bail yet. Uh, uh, it says, the article says he has been released after posting... Uh, twenty five thousand dollars bail. That could just be the reporter getting it wrong. Let's 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 see. Um, bail unsecured. I, I'm pretty sure that means unsecured in the financial sense. It has not been secured by collateral, as in cash collateral. So he has a twenty five thousand dollar bill. If he doesn't show up to court, is basically how that works. Bail gets revoked. You get arrested, thrown in jail, and you owe twenty five thousand dollars. So this is this is setting him up for failure. Basically, if he handles these charges above board appropriately, procedurally, and he can even fight them, but if he handles them correctly, they don't get any worse. But if he doesn't show up to court, they you know the the the, the worst things happen. You lose your bail. You get arrested. You're no longer allowed to be out on bail. And it does say here uh, bail status posted. So he is definitely out on bail. Um, damn, I have half a mind to look up this address, though. I'm going to do it off camera, though. Yeah. Because he posted the bail himself using his own name and address. I should be able to look it up. Oh wow, he lives right there where the 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 incident happened. He lives very close to that. Basically drove right past his apartment complex. Um it's not on the video, but uh basically uh I drove right past his apartment complex and that's where he was headed towards. That was one of the theories was that he was he was headed back home when he was trying to to get away. So let's see Google Maps what they have to say. Uh, yeah, it's just it's a it's a small housing complex. And yep, yep, it is a it is basically a row home housing complex. I'm not making fun of row homes. I live in a row home. Um, it's cheap. I love this cheap house, but, uh, so yeah, that he just, nothing special. That's, uh, super interesting. Unsecured bail is a strange thing. Uh, the only thing I can think of is it appears to be a first offense. Um, Kurt, I don't know if you want, if you're, if you want to pop in here or not, but, um, yeah, it, it appears to be a first offense. This court summary here is a court summary that will have further things on it down here. It will have another one of these headers with a uh, with a court and a, and a date and an active or inactive. And each one of these is going to be a new line for each court matter. So I don't think that this gentleman has a criminal record. Uh, I could I could try and run a more detailed criminal records check. Uh, I'm concerned about putting more information on the stream. You know what I mean? Yeah. I people are, know. people are already saying maybe you should stop getting more information on the guy and putting it on the stream. I don't know. Something yeah. I'm not, I'm not doxing him. I, I haven't, um, other, other than the, uh, I mean the, 
he provided his own address to the court and the and these are on public documents. I won't dox him on my stream, but uh, I'm certainly going to be looking up more information about him. Absolutely. Myself. I don't think it messes with his uh, family or situation. I don't I really don't get the impression that the people who are concerned about the law are going to be the vigilantes. I I really don't know that I'm helping the vigilantes ducks any or you know go after anyone. Also, speaking of guns and crimes and things like that, everybody heard the uh, NPR report this morning while I have a thousand of you here that it turns out there are far like on a, on a, a magnitude of 10 an order of magnitude, far fewer gun shooting, school shooting things going on in the U.S. than are being reported. The media would have you would have you think that there were hundreds of school shootings in 2015, 2016, and continuing to today. NPR had a massive investigative report out this morning saying that that about 200 of the 250 approximate numbers were confirmed to not be actual shooting cases and not even on a technicality. This was rather more of like a misreporting thing and within the margin of error. It's apparently it's, you could report a knife crime accidentally as a gun crime or you could report a uh, you know, some minor incident could have a digit misplaced and it would get reported as a gun crime or something. And so 0.2% of respondents uh, of 97,000 school districts reported that they had uh, that they had received or they had they had experienced a gun crime in the school between 2015 and 2016. It turns out it's more like two dozen, not 200. That's still a high number. It's still worthy of discussing. It's still people losing their lives. It doesn't change anything for me other than we now know the truth is the situation's a whole lot better than it sounded like. It sounded like we were in the middle of anarchy and people were just walking into schools and shooting people all the time, literally every school day of the year. No, that's not what's happening. It's still a problem. still needs to be solved. Just not breathe for a second and and start thinking about where we're getting our information from and how we're handling these situations maybe a bit too hastily. Whew. So I am here to... now. Oh hey Kurt, how do you how do you how do you do? I, I do you missed think? the uh, I missed the announcement. So I was here 44 minutes in, so I missed most of it, but yeah, with the, with the bail thing, it's weird because the normal rule on bail is you post a percentage of it. It's usually 10%, and the rest is secured against something. So I guess this means it's a $25,000 bail, but he only had to put up $2,500, and he didn't have to post any of the other thing with the security, which yeah. seems weird. I, I didn't know that was a thing that existed. Nope. Me neither. But I am not a criminal defense attorney. No. Near am I. So I guess we both learned something new today. So I saw that. I was unsecured. I was like, that's not how bail works. So I didn't know that was a thing. Well, there are 50 states with 50 different state laws, you know? Yeah, well, you know, every once in a while, yeah. I, I made a mistake. So, you know, we, we, we all learned something. And then with the uh, with the gun crime issue that you noted, it's it's interesting because, you know, uh, I'm, I'm fairly well affiliated with the gun rights legal community you know i do some legal advisory work and things like that and so we've kind of felt for some time that there's been some misreporting on these subjects and inflation of some of the numbers so to have some validation from that from an independent press is is nice Oh, cool! And my VS, my um, voice D, no, my uh, Isotope RX six plugin has been working this whole time. I hope I sound good for you guys. <clears throat> I just realized I have that on too. Oh, you have the plugin on. Yeah. I really, I really want to get that as soon as possible. Yeah, uh, it's 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 pretty good. Definitely. I mean, I'm it. sure everybody on the stream right now can hear the fan in the background, and it's too hot out for me to turn it off right now. So. 
that plugin sounds like a godsend. Yeah, for OBS it would. I don't know how you'd get it. You'd, you'd have to use like a, a pedal board or something. But we'll, we'll talk about that off stream. Yeah. But yeah, for any other streamers, podcasters, whatever out there, if you don't already, know, I just found out about this. If you don't know about the Isotope RX six, it's like thirty bucks for the plugin. Um, holy mackerel! It works with OBS, and and you you can clean up your your background noise even in real time. Well, that sounds like something I need. We'll talk. So we'll about get one of those. It. We'll definitely <laughs> talk. It's thirty bucks. It's really, you know, it's like that's a no problem deal. So, uh, so there's a couple people asking for a summary. Uh, that's fine. Lots of people get, get have gotten here a little bit late. Um, yes, this is, those were tasty cake pecan swirls. Just in case anyone's wondering, they're one of my favorite uh, foods that I shouldn't be eating in bulk, but of course they were on sale, so that happens. The gentleman who attempted to pull me over in a infi- I think it was an Infinity. Yeah, G thirty seven, G thirty five. Yeah. yeah, something like that. I, I keep wanting to say G thirty six, but that's a uh, that's a uh, that's a that's a uh, assault rifle. <laughs> yeah, G thirty five. But uh, yeah, with with some kind of uh, uh, skyline badges on the back, I don't know why that would be, and with a uh, with a set of police lights and everything, but with New Jersey plates on the car in Pennsylvania, tried to pull me over. And at, at first, I actually, it, he, it got me for a moment. So it, really, this guy's going to go to jail because he needed to have like that moment of superiority where I went like, oh, shit, uh, this is a cop. He got it. He got he definitely fooled me for a few seconds, maybe about 10 or 15 whole seconds. And you know that's a long time when you're being chased or pulled over by a cop. So for a good 10, 15 seconds, I thought I was being pulled over and I... Uh, I parked my car. I, I was totally trapped there for a moment, and I would have been trapped with whatever he wanted to do with to to me or whatever. Uh, had had I not, it clicked, and I pulled out and took off, and he came after me. And so, if he's going to come after me, then you know I don't know what am I going to do? Just keep driving forever? No. So I stopped, and that's when he confronted me with a a the club steering wheel lock. So kind of like a big heavy metal club or a crowbar. And either he saw my cameras or he saw my gun and he he left very quickly. And then, you know, yeah. I really admire you for being able to spot that because, you know, I thought about this. And if I were in your position, I'm not sure that I would have noticed what you noticed. I'm not sure that I would have been able to make the deduction that it wasn't a real police officer. Hmm. And I think I might have been in worse because of it so you know whatever was going on for you i'm not sure i would have made that same conclusion (laughs) well i mean i've only we i've only described what two previous incidents on this uh on this stream tonight and that's really not i mean those are the worst ones but but i've 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 not had the quietest of lives with these things Mm. i I would have preferred to make a choice to like be a police officer or something to experience this stuff rather than be just a citizen and occasionally have things that are dramatic happen to me. Um, I've even talked to people like professionals who have said that sociologically, for some reason, there seem to be some people that are more prone to being attacked. And, she, you know, that we haven't really figured out what it is. Maybe it's the way I carry myself or maybe I appear vulnerable or or weak or something. Um, or maybe maybe just, you know, some some aspect of my of my perspective or others perspective makes me makes it seem like I might be a vulnerable or targeted, ability, you know, a person yeah. who could be targeted. I'm not I'm trying not to play the victim here is what I'm, the reason why I'm using this language. Um, and and. It just coincidentally, you know, there are higher rates of this stuff happen to me than other people, and I guess maybe that's why I'm I'm prepared for it. Um, I have a question. Why isn't he being charged with false registration? Yeah, I mean, at some point, you do stop charging the person with every single tiny crime that they committed. I'm sure he also. You know, changed lanes without signaling and <laughs> ran a stop sign at one point. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm not belittling that 
that it's a crime and that he tried, but at some point, like, you know, what's what you're going to do? You're going to add, keep adding more money on top of the thing and you're going to add more jail time on the thing. And the, the judge is still going to do it all concurrently. So you're not actually adding any jail time. Plus you're adding things that the prosecutor has to prove in court now. So I get your argument, the argument that you just made, but I feel like that's an argument that you can make when it's like expired registration, not like somebody else's registration. Yeah. Like I agree. When you, look, when you look at it together with everything else, it looks like it looks like intent. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and that can and prove I'll the terrorist. I'll talk to, uh, to to Trooper Keller. Maybe maybe they'll add something like that. Um, yeah, and they can always add charges later. I mean, you just need enough to move forward. However, so you I don't... also want to be careful of looking at the hard work that they did do and and, and questioning it. So uh, I'll wait. I'll bide my time and wait till I have the appropriate moment to find out about that. Perhaps they. Perhaps I'm. I will be getting a phone call tomorrow or something. I don't know. If this goes to trial, I'm definitely making a road trip for that one. <laughs> nice. It's a Friday. September fourteenth is a Friday. Oh, I, I'll I'll make every possible effort for okay. that. September fourteenth, eleven a.m. Uh, it's 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 right here in Allentown. It's only about five minutes from my house. Uh, heck, I could walk there if I if I wanted to take some extra time to walk there. But uh, so this is how it works in Pennsylvania. This is my complaint about gun laws in Pennsylvania, and this is a super entitled complaint. <laughs> uh, so I, I I respect. Please please understand that I'm slightly joking here, but the only time where I have to be disarmed is basically when I walk someplace, and that's exactly the opposite of when I want to be disarmed. Why would I have to be disarmed when I am walking someplace? Like the courthouse or the the uh, the post office. Well, you're not allowed to go into the courthouse or the post office with a firearm or whatever, right? So there is a there is there is a solution. It, well, there's a there's a state solution. There's not a federal solution. I am not allowed to go anywhere near federal property while carrying any weapon whatsoever. So if you walk to a federal courthouse or walk to a po a federal post office with a weapon or firearm on your person, exercising your Second Amendment rights perfectly legally, you then violate federal law when you step onto federal property and you will be arrested in charge of the crime that carries a five-year penalty. If I walk to the state courthouse instead, well, there, they recognize that Pennsylvania is a free state when it comes to the Second Amendment, and they will take your firearm off you and hold it for you while you go to court, and then they'll give it back to you when you leave. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and I've done this. I have not done it with my firearm yet, because I test the waters with 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 things that are that carry light, lesser penalties first. And I've done this, and I know the procedure at my local courthouse to to enter with a weapon and then give them my my permit, and then you know they'll take me to a room and disarm me and. And they put my weapon in a thing, and I, and I sign a thing, and they give me a ticket, and then I come back and get it at the end of the thing. Um, yeah. I don't believe they really like that, but that's no, the I'm law. Sure they don't. <laughs> I'm sure they don't. But I, I have good news for you, Leonard, on this, because I've actually sued the U.S. government <laughs> under this exact statute that you're referring to. Oh, really? 18 U.S.C. 930. Yeah, I sued the, the National Park Service on this one. So uh, first, you have to actually go in the building. Because it's only federal facilities, which are defined as a building or part thereof. Okay. So as long as you're on the sidewalk, you're good. And without the criminal intent to commit another crime, it's only one year. So oh, it's okay. only a misdemeanor. So hey, the good news. So just for accidentally get it for getting caught accidentally for getting to take my fight disarm myself, it's a one year crime. Um, yeah. Also, you can't bring in the knife that's more say than two and a half inches, which is my personal favorite thing. If because it also finds a weapon as being a knife more than two and a half inches, which is every pocket knife ever. There's a, there, maybe there's a reason why this defense knife is so short. This is the Kabar or K-Bar or K-A-Bar knife. And it appears to be... That might be legal. Appears to be... Oh, that's that's really close. That is, yep, just under two and a half inches, about two and a quarter inches. Well, there you go. That's why it's that length. That's why it's that length. So I can take this into the post office. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, 
So I have to set foot in the federal courthouse. Good. Ugh. So yeah, so I, that's why I that's why you can't walk places. You can't I can't walk places or even ride my bike because where am I going to store a firearm securely on a bike? I'm not. Yeah, leave it in the bushes. That's a real good plan, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, oh I actually God. thought, what what about a lockbox? Like, couldn't we have like a public lockbox or something? But no, that, that's probably also just as complicated as a state courthouse lockbox. And they took out all those uh, after 9-11 anyway because they didn't <laughs> want people putting things in them. So, uh, yeah. Narleston but, News says, Jesus, what do you want to be able to crack a beer to? And I hate to break it to you, but there's no law that says you can't drink and carry a firearm in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, can you yeah. not? Can you not? Um, you can go to the bar wearing your concealed carry thing and drink and walk home. Okay, yep. I was going to ask if you can't drink in public, but if you're at you're the bar, not allowed to drink in public. Uh, you're not allowed to appear in public intoxicated. So you're not allowed to drink basically to it. You're not allowed to drink to intoxication in public, basically. Um, in Virginia, you can't drink if it's concealed, but you can drink if you're open carrying. <laughs> so what? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I didn't write the law. That's just what it says. <laughs> uh. <laughs> also, for the record, I don't play games with these rights. Uh, I take these very seriously, and I don't. I don't. First of all, never get that intoxicated. I, I mean, I've, those days are, are, are certainly. I'm not condemning anyone who drinks to be to intoxication. I just don't do that with alcohol because oh. my body does not react very well to that. Anymore. And here's another one about Virginia. That's a really good one. While Virginia will whack you if you speed, it is legal as a passenger to drink alcohol in a car. No. It's, yes, it is. It is not illegal for the passenger. That's the way the law reads. Wow. So, yay. <laughs> wow. I know. These are these are these little factoids you love they, to they learn. These, I have to take advantage yeah. of some of these rights. Ha heaven, heaven forbid that you have a radar detector because they will <laughs> fine you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was sleeping in a rest area because heaven forbid that you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to sleep in a rest area. I never knew that. I was sleeping in a rest area and got whatever woken up by the state police. They didn't care that it was two underage kids on the run. We had run away from home. <laughs> they didn't care, uh, you know, that we were sleeping for three hours at a rest area you're not supposed to. They wanted to know if we had a radar detector. Did you have a radar detector? We did not have a radar detector. They literally, they, they checked my, my, I searched my car with a flashlight. Like they didn't like pick it apart or anything. But they, they looked, looked through my car and they were like, what's that black thing underneath <laughs> your seat? And I'm like, that's my CD player. Show us. I was like, okay. I showed it to them and they were like, okay, get yourselves all, you know, splash some water in your face and, and get, get yourselves together and move along. Please take your time. Don't rush. We don't want you to be unsafe, but we do need, to move, to, need you to move. And then next to me, was the next car, and that sort of revealed why they were so not interested in me. And it happened to be a minority family of dark skin, and they were just ripping the car apart. Everything was out on the oh ground, and it was horrible. I, I honestly felt like if there's any time in my life when I benefited from racism, it was probably that moment. Jesus. What is this world? Right. And that was, that was like 20 years ago. That was 1996, yeah. My um my my girlfriend, my high school girlfriend at the time, her mother had been abusive and we had gone to the police and we had gone to the school and we had gone to the father and and the father we lived in Tennessee. So our the way our sixteen year old brains worked, we just decided, well, why don't we just go to Tennessee? So we went yep. to Tennessee. And, state and, to state, no papers. <laughs> so and I was not charged with kidnapping. Uh. Yeah, state to state, no papers. I still haven't told anybody that I moved to Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh. you're you're domiciled there now. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I honestly, uh, the, the rest area thing baffles me. You should yeah. be able to rest at a rest area. Now, if you want to get on the, you can't bring things into a, uh, the courthouse uh, trip. You can't bring in any electronics into the federal courthouse in Alexandria. Cell oh. phones, smartwatches, anything. Wow. So, and they don't have storage there. So, it, there are there are many different uh, standards on what you wow. can. Wow. Whereas people are live tweeting things up here. 
Yeah, that's why when they had the Manafort trial, we had that running of the interns that you saw maybe on the press where you saw the interns running out at high speed. They would write because there's down. no there's no phones in the there's no phones in the courthouse. So you have to go. I think it was on the ninth floor. So you had to go from the ninth floor down the escalator, down the everything, oh. and run out the door. Yeah, that's not worse than having sil- phones yeah. on silent in the courthouse. I'm sure the federal marshals were thrilled. This makes no sense to me. I mean, these judges have just got to be in the you know backwards ages of technology. They just don't understand or something. I really can't think of a efficient reason why you couldn't allow, uh, you know, even just the people in the gallery to have their devices on as long as they're silent and nothing makes any noise. And you could have it enforced, like have the bailiff or tip staff, you know, remove a person or steal their phone if if they don't, if, if their phone makes any noise whatsoever. You had to throw in the word tip staff there, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> that, that is the word. That's why you call you guys tip staff because that's the word. That's what judges staff are, tip staff. Yeah. Who is messaging me? Have we neglected anyone's questions? I thought there were some people who were saying we might neglect. Yeah, some so questions. I probably don't need to keep going on and on, right? We can get um we can get this over with. Is there anyone who has any questions or anything? Anything to say? Um, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give the... Uh, do I pay the staff? Um, so far, yes. lawful masses staff are not directly paid, but, we, but they do get perks. Um, tactical is my personal assistant in the law practice, so she gets paid through the law practice. Brandon is our community manager and quickly becoming one of our editors, and I have every plan to pay to pay Brandon um, very shortly here. Uh, right now, I pay for Brandon's phone, and his recent uh, perk was we upgraded his phone. So he's yeah. got a, a new phone and he was gracious and he let me upgrade my phone using his upgrade. And then I gave him my phone. So then he's going to get an upgrade in six months to another new phone, which he, no, says, Leonard, he's, which he says he's not going to use. But I swear is going to be done. Leonard, Leonard wants me to get an upgrade in six months. And I'm telling him I'll, I don't need I'll use another Princess Bride quote. I swear it will be done. Also, um, for those of you who are wondering, uh, the Verizon video that we released on Monday was completely edited by me. I'm pretty proud of it. So Yes, anyone who saw and likes the Verizon video from Monday, uh, please send your, your, your thoughts to Brandon because he, uh, he's very proud of that. We're proud of that. We're proud of him too. I, there was almost, it was pretty much a hands-off uh, edit. We didn't have to get involved. How was he caught is the question. That is a very good question. I do not know. Um, they told me that they would be running his face through facial recognition databases, and they, that may have come up with something. If he doesn't have a criminal record, I really don't know how they did that. So, license plate or uh, driver's license photos? Yeah, driver's license. Yeah, oh, yeah, driver's license photos would have probably been. Yeah. So you. So let me let me think let me think to myself if. Or out loud, if if his driver's license photos, then they're going to come back with a number of hits, possibly even hundreds or thousands of people that might, you know, not necessarily look the same, but a, a computer might not be able to distinguish just based on a driver's license photo and the, the quality photo from my rear dash cam. So I'm assuming the the trooper had to go through dozens to hundreds of hits and figure out, okay, which ones live locally, which ones are most likely to be the culprit. And then they probably were able to find somebody who drives a silver infinity who lives locally. And yeah, that, that narrowed it down. That probably narrowed it down pretty damn close. Yeah. You're looking for a silver infinity G35 or 37 within, you know, 20 miles of that yeah, that narrows it well down. Yeah, so, I bet yeah. you that does. So the man probably thought he was being very clever by replacing the license plates with New Jersey license plates and replacing the rear badges with Nissan Skyline badges <laughs> to make the car harder to identify. But uh, 
Now the question is the state of New Jersey wants to go after him for the for the trivial license plate violation. <laughs> Because they probably have jurisdiction there too. So I would maybe love. Jersey could I would with love to hit this guy with the freaking book. I mean, this this. Oh, man, I don't even know. I I literally can't even. This is that moment in my life where I'm just, my head is just yeah. exploding. I can't. I just. I can't say that the thought hasn't crossed my mind to dominate traffic by doing something illegal. Like my version is always, and I want to make this clear. So I'm going to try and describe this in exact language. Have you ever been to a carnival with lots of games? Like we have the great Allentown fair is starting tomorrow or tonight or something actually. And you go to one of these carnivals and they've got like this BB gun set up and you've got to you've got to shoot the star out from oh yeah the paper. those are impossible they're impossible because of course you know you can't clear all that paper away the bb just sort of pushes some of the paper out of the way by the time you get to the end of it but those automatic bb guns that just sort of like fire a million <laughs> bbs at like low sort of velocity not really going to hurt you too much if they hit you i would love to have one of those to shoot at other cars that cut me off and piss me <laughs> off on the road that's what I mean. I don't mean I want to shoot at other drivers. You know, someone's going to take me out of context. But what I mean is that I would love to be able to ding up their cars with something. When I drive down my main thoroughfare to get to my house, because I live on a main thoroughfare in Allentown, there are three lanes of traffic plus two parking lanes all going the same direction. And people still double park on both sides of the road, reducing a three-lane thoroughfare to a one-lane uh, cattle chute. And I really just want to, like, carry a wire brush or something and just, like, lean out my window and just, like, scratch the side of their car as I drive by when they're double parked and causing a huge traffic jam. I can't say I've never double parked in my life, but whenever I've had to do something of all like that, I've done it for the shortest amount of time possible and in the least inconveniencing way possible. Pull off the road, put your four ways on, whatever. Never have I, like, parked in front of traffic in the middle of rush hour. It just baffles me that people think this is an okay thing to do. And so I honestly feel like there should be consequences. And I'm assuming that, that that's where this guy's vigilanteism comes from, is he's like, oh, that should just consequences for people who cut me off on the road or whatever. And I didn't cut this guy off, but I did, I intentionally didn't, uh, he was tailgating me at one point, and I slowed down for tailgaters. I don't brake check them, but I slow down for tailgaters. So he was tailgating me, I slowed down, and, uh, and that was apparently enough to trigger his vigilanteism. Why did you give him a, a Barney from the Simpsons voice? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm really telling you. <laughs> it was Cause, awesome. Because that's how that's how I that's how I speak about stupid <laughs> things. Sometimes I, I go into a voice and start doing a voice to express how dissatisfied I am with the situation. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Oh yeah, XKCD has had this thought too, uh, Randall Monroe. XKCD is having every thought. <laughs> XKCD is way smarter than I will ever be. Uh, Are there people out, th out there who have memorized every single XKCD number so they can reference it? I'm going to say yes. Like. <laughs> Jan Negri asks if I've compromised my chances at trial. Absolutely not. Yeah. It's the state versus. It's, Leonard is a witness. Yeah, I'm a witness, and the most that they would try to do is discredit me as a witness, and I don't think I've said anything discreditable today. Have yeah, I? That, good, good luck with that plan. So, uh, yeah, Leonard, Mr. French, what is your occupation? Yeah, I'm a licensed attorney. In good yeah, standing with good the state standing. and three I have no criminal record. federal and I got jurisdictions. Video. Yeah, so uh, it should we yeah, have a, an audience of ninety-seven thousand people who who regularly tune in to watch us make educational videos about the law? Yeah, good I luck. think your credibility your credibility is pretty good. <laughs> My favorite favorite uh, favorite scene from The Dark Knight Rises, I think it was. Uh, you, you know, you, you're. The person you're trying to this blackmail, you know, beats criminals to a pulp yeah, yeah, yeah. with his, and you're trying to blackmail this person. Good luck. We have an update, <laughs> Leonard. The article is updated with our YouTube video. Oh wow! Wow, that was quick. We feel, yeah. I feel the love. 
guess they got my email. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. Yep, they embedded my YouTube they video. They embedded it as well. They they honored my request. I appreciate that. That's amazing. So that's that makes me very happy. Let's uh, just breathe a sigh of relief. It's not. I don't, I, now my vigilance is not over. Unfortunately, this man still doesn't like me very much now, does he? So uh, I might just keep being vigilant. I'm not necessarily saying I'm looking for compensation or anything like that, or restitution, or, or uh, I, and I and I reserve my right to change my mind if I feel like I've suffered some damage later. Um, but no, I, I and I don't. I'm not damaging my chances in court by saying the truth here that. I've been affected by it, but not as deeply as some other things. And if I later turn out to have some kind of something or other, lingering PTSD or something from this, I'll be very surprised because Brandon maybe can attest to this. Brandon has seen me when something has happened and I have been deeply affected by it. I don't, Brandon can say, you know, in his own words, whether he thinks I've been deeply affected by this in the same way. No, definitely not. I was here. Um, the I don't know if anybody remembers, but the outside his house being yelled at and uh, the parking thing, I was here both times. Um, the parking one happened the day after I moved to Pennsylvania. We had just woken up after the long sleep, and Leonard was going out to get groceries. And then um, the following incident happened a couple weeks later, and I was, I was in the house both times while it was happening, and... Uh, Leonard was very deeply affected by both of those. So Yeah, so that's one where I'm considering pursuing it because that woman works for my local for, for the local church and and shouldn't be assaulting people. But then again, that's also an uphill battle. A woman assaulting someone is going to come to court and have some credibility. People are going to ask, Well, you must have had some reason to assault someone. Um, and that I'm not saying what I think of that beyond that. But I, I expect I have an uphill battle to prove an assault charge against a uh, against a local woman who works for the church. It is what it is. What? What do you all want? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is telling me about the thing. Thank you very much, all of you who... Th th Whoa. Obviously, they're not on the stream because they would know that I know. So these are people that don't know that I know. So that's really cool. Uh, okay, so I don't need to decompress any further by keeping you all here beyond necessary. Uh, thank you for coming. Do we have any last thoughts or anything we want to do besides maybe... Uh, oh, no, I'm not saying that women get away with anything. Please don't... Uh, don't misinterpret that. I'm just saying that uh, proving an assault charge against a woman under these circumstances is going to be a little bit, a little bit uh, uphill battle for me. That's all I'm saying. Only that um, I just received a link from uh, Hill CT. Uh, I know that we're not going to do, a, we're probably not going to do a follow up to the Verizon video. So I just wanted to, to talk about it now. Um, apparently, Verizon posted a news statement saying that they will never offer unlimited again in 2013. Yes. Oh, I saw that. I and sent you a offer. link. I sent you a link, Leonard, if you're oh, if you're interested. Nice. But I'm still I'm still holding on to my old Verizon Unlimited plan, the original Unlimited plan. Oh yeah, my so stepdad is my OG stepfather original. is on. Yeah, my stepfather is on the uh, an OG grandfathered in T-Mobile um, Unlimited plan from like 2007, um, and he's holding on to that as well. He he he's been with T-Mobile since they were called State Wireless, and they were. A, biz a business solution. So he's got like a 27 year old account with them, you know? Nice. So uh, he is facing approximately five years maximum sentence. Uh, it appears to be his first offense. I don't know for sure, but that would usually indicate either minimal jail time or no jail time for a first offense. However, the severity of this is kind of severe. So we'll see. I don't think I'll be comfortable allowing him to plea to something less than, I don't know, a six-month sentence. I'll think about it, but 
nor is it necessarily my place. I don't get that say unless they give me that say. It's not automatic. I don't automatically, it's not some legal right for me to have a say in the, in the sentence. Um, it's more so the judge may want to hear what I have to say, or the prosecutor may ask me for my input on a plea deal. That's all. Um, can I really quick go through and read all the super chats from today? Yes, Just, go ahead. Uh, thank okay. you, everyone. Dreamer Don, thank you for the ten dollars. Tia Marie, thank you for the uh, one ninety nine. I believe that's our our patron sponsor. Uh, Nathan Warvey, thanks for the five dollars. Um, Elephant in the forest, thank you for the Australian five dollars. Uh, Tornek, thank you for the five dollars, and again for the fifteen dollars. Um, Andrew Cruz uh, donated uh, five Canadian dollars. Thank you so much. And Nathan Warby again donated five dollars, and Gotcha Son donated a total of four dollars. So thank you oh, to right. everybody who's wow. super chatted. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, and that's our show. So thank you all for your support. I'm not going to read the uh, uh, the the Patreon supporters and all that for this one. It's a weird story. I don't know that everybody wants to be associated. I don't know. So we'll just call this one a, a, a whatever. So thank you for joining me. I'm Leonard French, your somewhat stressed out, somewhat relieved favorite copyright attorney. And I will see you in the next uh, video or stream or whatever we do, which will probably be Thursday. I'll probably let this one be our video for, for Wednesday. And um, we'll see you Thursday. Okay? Thanks. <laughs>